Hello, I'm Tammy Walker, Director of the School of Music at the University of Iowa. And I'm Colin Hennessy, Vice President for Alumni and Donor Engagement at the University of Iowa Center for Advancement. Tammy and I are delighted to welcome you to the 2023 Holidays with the Hawkeyes. This year's theme is Together. And not only does that theme correspond with our university's new comprehensive campaign, Together Hawkeyes, it's also a great way for us all to remember the ways in which we gather together during the holiday season. In addition, Tammy and I are excited to officially launch the Holiday Haiku Contest, through which six winners will be selected. This year, we're very excited to be featuring some of our newest School of Music faculty and graduate students in the performances you are about to see. You'll hear performances by Dr. David Cizak, our new visiting assistant professor of oboe, Dr. Doreen Lee, our new visiting assistant professor of collaborative piano. You'll hear a performance by Dr. Aaron Freund, our adjunct harp instructor, as well as performances by the Dunn Graduate String Quartet, our first fully funded graduate string chamber ensemble in the School of Music. Back by popular demand, Lauren Lessing, the director of the UI Stanley Museum of Art will join us to have a conversation about two pieces she selected that best illustrate together. So sit back, relax, grab your favorite winter drink and enjoy the show.
I'm Lauren Lessing, the director of the University of Iowa Stanley Museum of Art, and it's a pleasure to talk to you today about Helen Frankenthaler's 1985 painting, Moondance Diner. We're very lucky to have this work on loan to us from a distinguished Hawkeye collection. As we think about togetherness during this holiday season, I'm always grateful to be able to join together works from our collection with works that some of our alumni collect, and we're very, very lucky to have this work on loan as part of Homecoming for the next few months. This is an artwork by one of the most important members of the Abstract Expressionist movement. She was based in New York. Helen Frankenthaler was a prodigy. She emerged as a force in painting when she was just a high school student. She was lucky enough to belong to a very illustrious family in New York. Her father was a Supreme Court judge in New York State. She grew up on the Upper East Side, um, right near the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and so she certainly was immersed in the art world from a very early age. She always had a deep sense of art history. So when people asked her who her influences were, she would say Jackson Pollock, which I think is obvious here, and also Peter Paul Rubens, which is maybe less obvious. She was an artist who, as a young woman, studied with Hans Hoffmann at the Art Students League and saw an early exhibition of work by Jackson Pollock at the Betty Parsons Gallery. Some of Pollock's early drip paintings really blew her mind and she immediately sensed and seized on the possibilities inherent in stretching canvas on the floor and dripping paint over the surface. She also pioneered the practice of staining canvas you know, really saturating unprimed canvas in pigment and working on a dark background in some cases. And you can see that here. You know, she starts with this reddish brown background and then by the mid 80s, she's working with acrylic paint and she is not only dripping paint across the surface, but really folding, you know, thick blobs of paint onto the canvas to really create almost a sculpture on the surface. Um, in this case, with this work, the title of which is Moondance Diner, that was a real place in New York on 8th Avenue uh, in Chelsea, but it was also, I think, a tribute to Edward Hopper. And you can all kind of conjure in your mind uh, Nighthawks in the Diner, that famous painting at the Art Institute of Chicago by Edward Hopper. She's very much in dialogue with that work here. This painting for me, you know, embodies the idea of togetherness because for Frankenthaler, she was someone who talked about the importance of drawing, but she never drew on the canvas in the way that you are used to thinking about drawing with black or dark lines, you know, in which she would then, you know, apply color. Instead, she thought about drawing as the merger of form and color. So when you look at a work by Helen Frankenthaler, think about the places where form and color come together, because for her, that's how she drew. The line is formed by the merger of those two things. And in the places where different colors just kiss, that's the place where line exists for her on canvas. So togetherness is the basis of her composition, the merger of form and color. Nighthawks at the Diner meets Jackson Pollock.
This is a painting by Lee Allen, Paul Bunyan, and Babe the Blue Ox from 1936. Lee Allen was an Iowan through and through. He was born in Muscatine, Iowa, raised in Des Moines, and he studied with Grant Wood at the University of Iowa. And I think you can see the Grant Wood influence here. This is a folk tale. It was painted during the 1930s when there was a lot of interest in the United States in what makes Americans particularly American. Funded by the Works Progress Administration and other federal programs that originated with Franklin Roosevelt, people were traveling across the country, gathering up and documenting folk tales, folk music, folk art. And Paul Bunyan is an American folk tale. It originated in the Northeast, but really deals with American culture along the border between the United States and Canada in the north of the Midwest and all the way over to the Pacific Northwest. So the story that we see depicted here very charmingly is the story of Paul Bunyan, who was a giant lumberjack. Uh, he was born in Maine, the legend states, and his parents had to feed him 12 gallons of milk a day. Um, he grew to be 30 feet high and he dug the Grand Canyon with a giant shovel. And you can see if you look, the Grand Canyon is included in this picture at the lower left. And so these two fast friends meet during a very cold winter. The story goes that it was so cold that the birds were flying backwards and everybody who stepped outside turned blue. So Paul Bunyan hears this wailing happening outside his cabin and he goes out through the snow and finds this little baby ox, a stot, a baby ox is a stot, who's so cold that he's blue. And um, Paul Bunyan brings him back into his cabin and warms him up, gives him a warm bath and fluffs him up. Um, but he's, he's so frozen from this experience that even after he's warm, he stays blue. But like everything else that Paul Bunyan touches, he grows to be giant in proportion and matches him for size. And I really, really love all the details that have emerged in this painting since we cleaned it. Thanks to a gift from the Henry Luce Foundation, we were able to clean this painting and notice details like the hairs on Paul Bunyan's knuckles and his buttons, which are little cross sections of logs. Um, and you can see, uh, if you're standing in front of this painting, details like Babe the Blue Ox's eyelashes, which really stand out against that background. Uh, Lee Allen here blends a couple folk stories because not only do we see lots of imagery from the Paul Bunyan story, but we can see the Big Rock Candy Mountain. A lot of you will know that folk song, um, which was recorded for the first time during the WPA um, by folklorists who were collecting American folk music as well as folk tales. Um, and that, you know, sugar crystal mountain is visible in the background. So lots of details emerged during this cleaning when we were able to get a lot of the dirt on the surface of this painting off. I had the chance to talk to his two daughters recently, Lee Allen's two daughters, and they shared with me that in the 1930s, uh, the artist was living in a one-room house in Iowa City that had a coal-burning stove. So we cleaned lots of bituminous coal smoke off the surface of this painting and, and other paintings that we owned by Lee Allen. Life got better for Lee Allen. He became much better off first as a professor at Cornell College where he taught art for many years and later as an illustrator for the ophthalmology department here at the University of Iowa. He became one of the best known scientific illustrators of eye diseases in the United States and so life got better for Lee Allen but we are so grateful to the Luce Foundation for being able to, to clean this painting and really being able to see in detail all of the charming color and drawing that are part of it. And I think it's a really wonderful image of togetherness during this holiday season when we're thinking about the importance of being together. Paul Bunyan never married. He was a famous bachelor, but he always had Babe with him to keep him company. So happy holidays from the Stanley Museum of Art.
thank you so much for watching. Be sure to stick around for the credits where you'll learn about other exciting upcoming events at the University of Iowa. Thanks so much for joining us for the 2023 Holidays with the Hawkeyes. As we say on campus, once a Hawkeye, always a Hawkeye.